Uh, to be honest with you, I don't pay too much attention to the fundamentals. I'm more of a technician, so I look more at price patterns. Uh, the fundamentals are the underpinnings of why the markets are moving in different directions. It's just that analyzing the technical prices will get you in on those moves uh, 90% of the time earlier than the fundamentals will paint that full picture for you, if that makes sense. You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. This is Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Hey, we got Michael Moore with us today. Not the Michael Moore, the Moore from more analytics and with us to review some markets see where they're heading particularly of noted interest energy gold bitcoin and we'll get to some others if we have a chance michael it's great to have you back on the show so what do the markets have in store for us today or now jerry thank you very much for having me show okay this is crude oil we've obviously generally been in a slide over, over the past three weeks uh, four weeks mm -hmm. break um, the trade below 80. Most recently, the trade below 80.82 has brought in $4.70 of pressure. And I said, no, we are in a bearish correction or trend against the move up from 72.23. And I said, and if it's a correction, we've entered into the ideal time frame for an exhaustion area to hold. And we today we came down and we just touched below this exhaustion area at 76.57. We traded down to 76.04, about to have rallied right here. Now, this doesn't change this and make this bullish necessarily. But one thing I would note is that the heating oil and the gas oil both have turned bullish today. They've both broken above uh, formation in those that project them higher. So I would expect that the crude oil is likely going to follow because the heating oil uh, is leading the complex right now. Mm -hmm. The reason why we know the heating oil is leading the complex is I, I – weigh the spreads between the products of crude oil and the crude oil, and that dictates to me which product is leading the complex to the upside. And currently, it is the heating oil that is leading the complex to the upside. So crude oil is most likely going to follow. Uh, I would also follow that up with saying that if this crude oil gaps open higher tomorrow, as the market's going to close in 23 minutes from now, but if it gaps open higher tomorrow, uh, it will leave a minor bullish reversal below that will likely bring in higher trade for a couple of days. And but the the eyes are really on the heating oil to see what that does. If that fails back down below the, the formation it broke above today, then the whole market should capitulate and continue back down to the downside. All right. So uh, interesting. And uh, hey, so we're you know it's summer now. So they used to once upon a time build inventories for the winter. Uh, is that what's going on now here, or is something else happening? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't pay too much attention to the fundamentals. I'm more of a technician, so I look more at price patterns. Uh, the fundamentals are the underpinnings of why the markets are moving in different directions. It's just that analyzing the technical prices will get you in on those moves 90% uh, of the time earlier than the fundamentals will paint that full picture for you, if that makes sense. Yeah, it certainly does. We get that uh, because- You yeah, have heads up too on the heating well, that formation that we broke above came in at 244.64 as of one o'clock, and that decreases by uh, seven ticks per hour. If we fail back below that decently, that'll turn the market back to bearish. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Next. And uh, so you want to take a look at the gold? Yeah. We're always interested in gold. So gold, we really, has come off pretty hard here. We've been bearish since holding exhaustion up above. I had a large gap open lower yesterday. So the gold, I warned it trade below 24.6480 to 24.6120 would warrant decent pressure likely for days. Uh, we had come off 
uh, $96.10 coming into this morning and uh, a little bit more than that today. And then the trade below 2411 projects this downward $65 plus. We had seen 45.1 of that so far and then another piece of that today as well. And then the trade below 2380 uh, also order pressure. Uh, today also... We are likely going to lead a minor bearish reversal above. Hang on one second here. Mm -hmm. Right here. So we were negative the minor bullish reversal from below the previous day, left a minor bearish reversal above today. Actually, that's already in place because uh, the gold's already closed at one third. So I think that this in the entire time frame bearish correction against mm -hmm. being up from 19, even 20. So this can still see considerable lower trade. Um, those first exhaustion levels for the higher time frame uh, are don't even come in till uh, twenty two sixty six to twenty two fifty five, and then you have lower right. ones that at twenty one ninety four to twenty one ninety one twenty. So yeah, looking pretty bearish here. Um, you have any questions on that? Or I no, no, I can see your point there. The uh, Looks like, looks uh, like a little toppy, huh? Yeah. Well, if this is a sixty-minute chart, if I was to go to a daily chart like this one um, and really uh, tighten it up a bit like this, you can see we've had this five-wave structure up here, peaked right here, held exhaustion, and then um, as we're starting to roll over. So I think that this correction. Uh, is going to exceed the size of this one right here, probably down into here, but probably dip down into these lower areas before slash if resume higher trade. This right. would be an area of uh, consolidation or, or support, if if you want to call it that, uh, between uh, uh, 2308.70 and uh, 2304.70. You really take that out, that can you know really take this down into the twenty one seventies or so. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to look at the Bitcoin, or did you have any questions on that before we? Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense there. So the Bitcoin, um, the trade above fifty six seven forty uh, mm -hmm. turned us bullish. We'd seen eleven thousand nine hundred fifteen per coin of that, and then the trade above sixty one oh forty five projected this upward seven thousand per coin. We attained 7,610 of that so far. However, I noted that right up in here with these two little lines, this uh, denoted possible exhaustion. We held it just about exactly right there at um, the 68,121 to 68,589 with a 68,655 high and rolled over 4,865 per coin and a little bit more than that today. Oh, uh, yeah. Possibly in a bearish correction against this move up from 53,635. Mm -hmm. Initial exhaustion is at 62,917. And then we have another one at 61,145. And then other yeah. ones below. If this rallies up and takes up at this formation above here, which comes in at 69,500 plus 21 per hour starting at 2 o'clock PM Eastern Standard Time, that will roar of renewed strength. Mm hmm. So what do you think? Uh, I mean, in the longer run, is the uh, is the run up still intact or uh, or what? We can see uh, this is a daily chart right here. Let me just pull this together a little bit. Um, I think this this run up from the you know twenty thousand per coin level here. I think that this is just a bearish correction against this mm -hmm. consolidation. If this takes out this formation above, uh, it will have very significant projections to the upside. Let me uh, just pull that together again. That line up there is right up here. I didn't mention that. I'm sorry. That comes in at 71,551 minus one per hour starting at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If we break above that diesel, and that is going to project this upward 18,000 plus per coin. So that's a very significant formation to keep an eye out. All right. right now, just short term, we're bearish right here. Short term bearish, but uh, potentially could go higher. How high can it go here? I mean, it's right. I mean, if, if we take this formation out above, this thing could really scream. I mean, this thing could move up into the mm -hmm. 105. <laughs> right. 
uh, up in those levels. But at the very minimum, we take that formation out and we project this upward 18,000 per coin from that it, level. It's, it's, been, been, it's been a bit range bound, you know, fluctuating yeah. between like mid 50s up to like uh, high 60s. Exactly. And uh, it, it's like it's waiting for a push up or down. You know, I can't figure out which, but the trend is still up for now. Could it have peaked? I don't know. It uh, it hit an all time high, so I think the more the higher likely scenario is a, a run to the upside. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, this is a lot of consolidation right in here, if you can see on my screen. But the yeah. run into that consolidation was from lower levels, strongly up into it. So usually, you have a big run like that. It's going to consolidate for a while before launching off in, into a whole nother run. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just short term bearish right here, but I think. Uh, the the more likely scenario will be that this will eventually continue to the upside. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. All right, I buy it. <laughs> I'm buying it, so uh, you don't have to sell it. <laughs> well, just as a uh, a point to your listeners, um, some people when they approach the markets, they mm-hmm. most retail people approach the markets from an investor's standpoint, right. Not a trader's standpoint. This is true. And the difficulty with that is they often take hold positions uh, for significant periods of time against themselves. And um, the worst thing that can happen with that is that, that they're correct. And then it takes off again and then they rally and then they feel good about holding the position for all that time. But there's also... Uh, Opportunity costs there. First of all, if the thing keeps going down, you can really get destroyed. Second of all, while it's going down for a long period of time, you know, you're not making money in that investment. And one of the things that's helpful about having an analyst like me or somebody else who knows what they're doing in the market and knows different levels, even if you're not able to trade on a day to day basis every day in and out of the markets. If you know decent levels on the way down, you're better off um, getting out of longs. Let, let's say, if, for example, you want to hold the mar- hold it for a, a big move to the upside, and then the market starts going down against you. Right. You're better off getting out of longs below certain formations, and then trying to buy again at small areas where you can take mm-hmm. minimal risk. And if it bounces off that area, you take off part of your position to pay for the trade. And that way, if it goes down through the level, then it's basically a wash or maybe you make a little bit of money and keep doing that at different levels on the way down. And eventually, if that if the market is going to return to the upside, um, you'll be on it very close to its turning inception, but having taken much less risk on the way down. Okay. I'll buy that. I'll buy it. Makes sense. Yeah, it's yep. like uh, old Wall Street maxim, uh, you never go broke. On Wall Street taking a profit, right? Well, I've heard people say that, but that can that can definitely be false. Also, depends on when you're taking those profits. You know, if you're if you're well, well to, to your point, if you're letting your losers run against you, but you're taking your profits too quickly, then you can get annihilated. Um, but what you want to do is you want to limit your losses and let your winners run. Yes. You want to cut your losses and let your profits run. Exactly. But what is one very true Wall Street maxo that I think everyone would do well to remember is the markets can stay irrational mm-hmm. far longer than you can stay liquid. Uh, solvent. Yeah, this is very true. No question about it. And a good example... Mm-hmm. To anybody out there, if they're wondering whether they should just hold something against themselves, is crude oil back in 2021 that went to negative forty dollars a barrel briefly, which would have wiped out anybody's account. So, always trade with stops. Always know where you want to get out if it goes against you, and have an idea of where you want to get back in. Yeah, if you want to get back in, sure, exactly. Makes a lot of sense. All right. What else we got here? Would you like to take a look at the uh, S&P? Yeah, let's look at the S&P. Okay. Unless you want to look at natural gas, either one. 
Uh, let's look at S and P first. Then we can okay. finish up with that gas. Okay. So the S and P five hundred. You can see here we've had a couple of we had a gap lower here on the seventeenth of July. Another big gap lower here on the twenty fourth of July. More importantly, though, we held a very key exhaustion up here. You can see that in red. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been on the show a number of times for quite a period back. So just as a macro summary of some of the other things I've called in here, I've been bullish since 3502, uh, which I said would likely start a macro uh, bullish trend. We've seen 2,219.25 handles of that and a lot of other yeah. bullish formations in here along the way. All of those are on hold. I said we held possible exhaustion at 57.1975 to 57.26 even with the 572125 high and had rolled over 270 points coming into today and then a little bit more than that right here and then the trade below 5619 brought in 168 pressure and then more recently the break below 5572 I said projected this downward 64 minimum 122 plus maximum based off a of well-formed formation. We had attained 121 of that coming into today and then got the 122 plus right here that before holding this exhaustion below. Short term right here, uh, I'm bullish because we broke back above this line at uh, 55.73.12 or 55.73 mm-hmm. basically. It, it has odd odd levels here. It, it, it doesn't tick in those increments, but I have them there because it's a line that's moving down that you're trying to adjust. So short term here, I'm bullish, but I think that in general, this is probably not finished to the downside yet and probably uh, a likelihood of rolling over again. If this was to trade decently back above this major formation above, which comes in at 55, 82, 35, plus 34 per hour, starting at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I would be out of all shorts, long, and uh, looking for this to rally for days. And that would probably uh, be a high likelihood that this would run back up to 57.21 and a quarter plus. If we can walk when we take out this formation down below here, which comes in at 54.33.64 plus 22 per hour starting at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that will warrant decent pressure. There are some exhaustion levels to contend with on the way down. Um one of them comes in at 57.70.75. Next one down below comes in at 52.87.75. And then a final one comes in at 51.70, even to 51.60.50. Mm-hmm. And um, any questions on, on that before I go to the natural gas? I think that looks pretty good. Yeah. Let's do natural gas. Okay. Natural gas. Give me one second. I just got to pull it back up here. So the natural gas. Just as an overall, because we've been on the show for a while, we've been bearish since eight dollars and twenty point eight. Yeah, six I around. remember the glory days. Yep, we've seen six dollars and sixty eight point six of that to the downside. A number of other bearish formations in here. More recently, we had a run up. We held exhaustion up above at three twenty two ten and have rolled over a dollar twenty point six. Um, and then yesterday we left a. Uh, yesterday, we left a minor bearish reversal above that warned a renewed pressure, likely back down towards the lows. We're starting to see that pressure down towards the 20150 level. But I would caution that this is likely in the last stretch of the move down from 322.10 with exhaustion levels. Like, at one. What's that? It looks, it looks like a double bottom's coming. So we have exhaustion levels to be aware of at 194.60. And then another level here at 185.70 to 180.90. And one further one down below here at 160.20 to 152.50. Also, if it takes out this line above here, which is a well-formed line, that's going to come in at 218.90 minus 1.5 ticks per hour starting at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That will project this upward 200 ticks minimum, 370 ticks plus maximum. Yeah, so that summarizes the gas. All right, I'll buy it. I think my commentary can be somewhat dry and to the point and very numerical, but I mean, all right. well, my my client's lives, hedge funds and industry companies and, and proprietary traders, so they're right. dialed into the specifics of the numbers and all. Okay, I like it. I like it. All right, Michael, where do we find you again? 
Um, people can go to my website, which is more analytics. Uh, let me just pull up a, a thing just so the viewers can see it real quick. Um, here we go. All right. You have more analytics. More is just spelled M O O R, no E at the end. So it's right. more analytics.com, or you can always reach me by email or phone. Very well. The link is in the show notes to this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. And uh, hey, when you go there, take a look at the site, sign up for a free newsletter. I know you'll like it. Got like really good stuff on it. Information you will not find anywhere else. And uh, got a question for Michael or myself, shoot me an email, kl at kerryletz.com. Mike, always a pleasure. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you very much, Kerry. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Kerry Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.